Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to go through basic JavaScript. Should be pretty exciting, pretty fun to learn. So JavaScript is the functional part of web development, and it's very, very important to know for web development. So yeah, let's get started. We're going to be learning vanilla JavaScript today. No frameworks or anything, just vanilla JavaScript. So all right, let's start. All right, basic JavaScript, comment your JavaScript code. So comments in JavaScript, they don't do anything. It's just for like notes. So there I can have a note of hello, or I can have a multi-line comment using the slash star. Next up, declare JavaScript variables. Here, they want us to do a variable with the var keyword and then my name. Make sure you have a semicolon. Now we want to store values with the assignment operator. Here they just want us to assign a number to A, and that number is going to be 7. So now A equals 7. Assigning the value of one variable to another, here they just want us to have B equal A, and run it. Initializing variables with the assignment operator, here they want us to make a variable called A, and have it equal to 9. Understanding uninitialized variables, here a, b, and c don't have values, so we want to give them values. a of 5, b of 10, and c of i am a as a string. And run it. Understanding case sensitivity in variables, um, they want us to use something called camel case, which is lowercase first letter and then uppercase the next word, or the next words that come after. So yeah, we'll just change these into using camel case. There we go, now they're all using camel case, and let's move on. Now we want to add two numbers with JavaScript, so that's just done with the plus sign. Subtract one number from another with JavaScript, that's done with the minus sign. So here we want to subtract 33. Multiply two numbers with JavaScript, that's done with the star sign. And here we want to have 0 be 10. Now we want to divide one number by another with JavaScript, that's done with the forward slash. So here we want it to be 33, and we want it, the quotient to equal 2. Increment a number with JavaScript. Here they want us to use this plus plus operator instead of my var equals my var plus one. So we'll just do my var plus plus, and that'll make my var equal to 88. Decrement a number with JavaScript. Same thing as incrementing, except minus minus. So now it'll be 10 instead of 11. Now we want to create decimal numbers with JavaScript. For this challenge, we want to have a variable of my decimal and have it equal to some random decimal, and that should work. Yep. Now we want to multiply two decimals with JavaScript. Here we want the product to equal 5, so it'll be 2.5, and run that. Now we want to divide one decimal by another with JavaScript, so instead of 0 here, we'll do 4.4, so that the quotient equals 2. There we go. Now we want to find a remainder in JavaScript. This is done using the modulus operator which is the percent sign. And for this challenge, we want to do 11 modulus 3. So it'll find the remainder of 11 divided by 3, which would be 2. So remainder should equal 2 here. And yeah, that's all we have to do. Here we want to use compound assignment with augmented addition. So here we just want to do a plus equals 12, and b plus equals 9, and c plus equals 7. And that's the same thing as what there was there before. So yeah. Now, same thing, except with subtraction, a minus equals 6, b minus equals 15, and c minus equals 1, and run that. Same thing, except with multiplication, a times equals, b times equals, and c times equals, and run that. Yep. Same thing, except with division, there are division equals for all of them, run that. Now we want to declare string variables, so here we want to have my first name equal to my first name and a variable of my last name equal to my last name and that should work yep now we want to escape literal quotes and strings so here i'll copy this and paste it here and we want to get we want to escape these these quotes here and to do that we use backslashes so put a backslash before every quote except for the two on the outside and there we go we'll put backslashes before every quote except for the ones on the outside, and that should work. Yep. Quoting strings with single quotes. Um, here we can use single quotes on the outside, and then that way we can actually use double quotes on the inside without having 
escape characters, so without having backslashes everywhere, and that should work. Yep, escaped sequences and strings. Here they want us to copy this and put it here, equals the string, and then we want to put new line, tab, backslash, and then new line. So the new line is backslash n, the tab is backslash t, and the backslash is backslash backslash. And then the new line again is backslash n, and that should and that should work. Let's try it. Now we want to concatenate strings with the plus operator. Here we'll take two strings and we'll concatenate them together with a plus. Make sure there's an equal sign. And now it'll say this is the start, this is the end as my string. Now we want to connect, concatenate strings with the plus equals operator. Um, this is done by doing this and then doing my string plus equals and then the second sentence and that should work yep now we want to construct strings with variables and for this one we'll set my name equal to my name and then for this my string we'll have my name is and then plus my name and then plus and i am well so now my string says my name is landon and i am well let's try that Appending variables to strings. So we want to set this adjective to fun and then we'll go my string plus equals some adjective. So that my string now says learning to code is fun. Here we want to find the length of a string. This is done by doing dot length behind of a string and that'll get us the length of the string. So here Lovelace is eight characters. So last name length should be eight characters. Here we want to use bracket notation to find the first character in a string. Um, this is done by doing bracket zero behind the, a string, and that'll get us the first index of the string. So it'll get us the first character. One would get us zero or O, two would get, get us V, three would get us E, and so on. So let's see if that works. Yep, understand string immutability. Um, here this doesn't work to make it hello world. We have to set the whole string differently, so I'll do my string equals hello world, and that should work. Yep. Now we want to use bracket notation to find the nth character in a string. Um, for the challenge, we want to set third letter of last name to the third letter of our last name, so that's actually index two to be a V, and yeah, that should work. Now we want to use bracket notation to find the last character in a string. This is done by doing last name dot length to get the length of it, which is eight, and then getting the index of seven by doing minus one and that'll get us the e so let's try that yep now we want to use bracket notation to find the nth to last character in a string um so to find the last one we do last name dot length minus one to get the last one but we want to get second to last so it'll be in minus two instead and that should work word blanks so this is just a challenge that free code camp gives us and we want to make a string using those variables so I'll just say the dog, so my noun, plus my verb, so the dog ran, and then plus my adverb, so the dog ran quickly, really, and then my adjective. So it says the dog ran quickly, really big. Not the best sentence in the world, but you know, whatever, gets the job done. Let's run that. Oh, we actually have to have um, strings in between all of these as well. And now it should work. Oh, I actually need spaces around these um, different words here, and now it should work. Yep, there we go. <laughs> now we want to store multiple values in one variable using JavaScript arrays. Here they want us to have a string, and then follow that by a number. So now my array equals this, run that. Yep. Now we want to nest one array within another array, and that's done by putting an array inside of an array, and that should work. Now we want to access array data with indexes. Here we'll make a variable called my data and have it equal to my array and then the first value, which would be the zero. So that'll get us 50. One would get us 60 and two would get us 70. So now my data equals 50. Modify array data with indexes. Here we want to grab my array and grab the first value and set it to 45. So now my array equals 45, 64, 99. Run that access multi-dimensional arrays with indexes. Um, to do this, we use two brackets. Um, the first one will get the outermost um, layer, and then the second one will get the inner one. So here they want us to get eight, so they want us to get this value. So that is the third one over, so two, and then it's the second one over inside that one, so that'll be one, and that should get us eight. Let's run it. Yep, manipulate arrays with push. 
function. To do that, we want to set myarray.push, and then we want to push dog3. And so now myarray will equal john23, cat2, and dog3. Run that. Now we want to manipulate arrays with pop. Um, pop will take off the pop will take off the last element in the array. So here it'll take off cat2, and then it'll set removed from my array to cat2 as well. And then my array will now equal just John 23. So run that. It'll actually be my array dot pop. So you got to specify what array you're going to pop off of. Okay, run that. So manipulate arrays with shift. Um, this is like pop, pop, except it takes off the first value instead of the last value. So here we want to have my array dot shift. And now remove from my array will be John 23. And then my array will equal dog 3. Run that. Now we want to manipulate arrays with unshift. So this is like push, except it does the first one. Here we'll go myArray.unshift, and inside we'll put Paul and 35. So now Paul 35 will be at the beginning of myArray. Run that. Here they want us to make a shopping list um, using nested arrays. So I'll do that quick. So there I have just a bunch of chocolate bars, um, items of 10. Let's try that. Yep. Now we are starting to get into JavaScript functions, and now we want to write reusable JavaScript with functions. And for this challenge, we want to have a function called reusable function, and all it does is prints out hi world to the console. And right now it won't do anything because it's not being called, so we want to call it by doing reusable function and then putting the parentheses at the end of it. So only when we state this, does this function actually run? Otherwise it wouldn't run. Run that. Make sure it's high world capitalized. Yep, there we go. Passing values to functions with arguments. Here we want to have a function called function with args, and that has two parameters of num1 and num2, or two arguments. And all this is going to do is console log num1 plus num2. And then to call the function, we'll do um, we'll do functional function with args, and we'll pass in two and three. So here, function with args, num1 is two, and num2 is three. Um, the positions matter, so yeah. So num1 is two, num2 is three, and then they add it together to be five. And let's try that. Yep. So here, global scope and functions. Um, here they want us to define a global variable called my global and set it to equal to 10. And then we want to assign oops global 5 here without the var keyword for some reason. Um, but yeah, that should work. So now local scope and functions. Here we'll have a variable called my var and we'll set it equal to high. And then all it prints out is inside my local scope right here. It'll say high, but not outside because it's inside this function and it can only see what's inside the function and this one can't see inside that function either so uh, we'll try that global versus local scope and functions here we want to override this uh, global variable inside the function so we'll set outerwear equal to a sweater inside of this function and it'll actually return sweater instead of t-shirt apparently we need the var keyword for this and then it'll work Return a value from a function with return. So here we'll have a function called times five and it'll return its arguments of num times five. So it'll be num times five. So here if we call times five with a number of five, then it will do five times five equals 25 and it'll return it. So if we do console log around this, there it says 25 down here. It's doing this function five times five, returning it, and then now 25 is here instead of the function. So that's what it's console logging. Let's run that. And I'd say this is a pretty good time to stop. Um, this was part one of the JavaScript course on free call camp. We made it all the way down to understanding undefined value returned from a function. That's what we're gonna start off with next time. So I'll see you then.